Hey guys and girls, it's Blackjack with 396 Guitars. We are back on the bench with the white, Arctic white P bass that we're building for a customer. Uh, roasted maple neck, white with a black pickguard classic. Let's get to work. It's really starting to look like a bass guitar now, as you can see. Just here. Um, it really pops. I like the black tuners on it. Um, eventually, I'm going to try to talk him into putting a black bridge on it, and we got a black uh, string tree coming for it, but it's making sound. Um, yeah, it's making sound. We're going to check it out for the first time right here with you guys. Um, everything needs to be adjusted. I like it. Um, it's not all the way there yet. Uh, it is tuned up. And I did check the uh, neck relief. I'm going to do that with you right now. And I did not adjust it. All I did was put on a set of donor strings. When I say donor, um, I did a setup and a restring for a brand new, believe it or not, a brand new white P bass the other day. And the strings that came off of it were these. So there, I saved them. They're brand new, and I'm using them as the mock-up for this guitar. It's going to get a brand new set of strings for whatever the customer wants to put on it. But instead of wasting a brand new set of strings, I'm just using these to get all the measurements and everything correct. And then we'll put the same gauge on. Um, so far, I like everything that I'm seeing here. String spacing. Um, we're splitting all the... All the, the magnetic pole pieces on the pickups, which is exactly what you want to do. It, it is critical to get good sound out of it for it to be splitting those pole pieces, which means I got the, the pickups mounted exactly where they need to be. This is the second pick guard that I put on it. As you can see, I had to do quite a bit of clearancing to get it in there. Um, is it perfect? No, but I'm telling you, it's a thousand times better than the first one I did. The ears. The cutouts for the ears just gave me so much trouble getting it fitted to where those are positioned in there to get the pick guard on in, in uh, a happy position. So um, that's that was a pain in the ass so far with this one. Uh, let, just to show you, and I did not adjust the truss rod on this. All I did was straighten it when I got it, when it arrived here. I put it in a straight condition. And... That is perfect. It's kissing 12 thousandths at the seventh fret, which is the sweet spot for me. Um, string height, I have no idea where it is. Intonation, I have no idea where it is. But before we get into any of that, uh, I have to address this. It's a brand new neck. So before I can do string height, I have to get the nut slots cut to where they're supposed to be. Um, that's critical. Uh, first fret action should be if i get it to just where it starts to buzz on a twenty thousand it's probably too close so i'm gonna go with 23 and we're, we're way far away on all of them so they need to be cut and that's pretty standard operating procedure when you get a new neck uh, or when you put a new nut in of course um, Pull out all my base 45, 85, 75, and 100. I'm going to need that one. 105 and 65. That's for a five string. So, yeah, we are 105 to 45 on this, and this is the nut, the, the nut files that we're going to use. Um, this is kind of a, a long, tedious process, and I'm going to show you the first part of it. I, I know some of you have seen this already, um, but Brand new neck, um, so the nut, they're pre-slotted, and they are they were pre-slotted in a good position because, as I said, I like the string spacing. It looks good on the neck, and it especially looks good down here on the uh, pickups. So, yeah, we go to it, and very carefully start cutting. 
and this is going to take forever because it's a composite nut and it tends to load up my file quite quickly. Are we even in the camera view? Uh, and you have to ever so carefully get it rounded out, first of all, to accept the size of the string and to get it down. And then clean out your file. Um, because it's going to take me quite some time. And it's trial and error. You cut it a little bit. You get it where you think, and then you tune it back up and check, check it with the feeler gauge. So I'm going to continue to cut this down, clean the file, cut it down, clean the file. And I'll be right back. So just to show you, you keep going at it. With this one with 105, and that'll that'll get it wide enough. But I actually switched over to uh, 85 thousandths. To get actually get some cutting action because it was just taking too long. Um, now that's that's perfect right there, just barely interfering on a twenty-three thousandths on the first fret feeler gauge. Uh, I've got three more to do, and of course I'm not going to make you suffer through that because it is time consuming and it takes a lot of video time. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. Um, so I'll be right back. When I get back, this will all be done, and we can finish the setup and actually play it through a real bass amp. Stand by. So finally, there's 45 minutes out of my life I'll never get back. Um, Twenty-three thousandths on a bass. I'm, that's usually where I put them. And you shouldn't have any issue. Now, when you get done, you kind of hold at the at the third fret and just tap it. It should just be a little bit of. And if you sight in there really closely, you'll see there's just not even a millimeter, just enough clearance for it to go. Tick, 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 tick. And you know you're there. That's just a double check type of thing, but if you use the feeler gauge method, cut a little bit off, tension up your string, test with the feeler gauge, keep doing that process, you're going to be tempted to keep grinding and cut, and you're going to end up going too far, and if you do, then you have to know how to fill that slot or change the nut and start over, uh, but that's another story, that's another story. So we know our nut slots are cut, and we're getting ready to now check our string height, pickup height, and intonation, which is back here. I don't, I don't know if this is intonated to this guitar. Probably not. But that's all part of the setup. Here we go. Let's just see where our string height is. Uh, I have no idea. All I did was raise them up a bit just to get it so it wasn't buzzing off the board. I'm looking for five, hopefully no more than six sixty-fours, which is where the E is right now. Five, five, boy. Pretty damn close considering all I did was jack them up um, to get them off the board without checking. Um, I'm going to bring these all up slightly, except for the E. And I think we're going to be Jake. Looking, sighting down, making sure that our saddles are level with the playing field. Tune. And 
and then double check again. Tedious. It goes on and on and on like this every day of my life. Just a little, just a bit over six on the E. You gotta come up, you gotta come up, you gotta come up. Now, once this guitar settles, we might be able to lower the action, but for now, we're going to set it at six. It may be good enough that it'll take it. Some of my bases will, some won't. In fact, I have one bass that only likes to play at seven sixty-fours, which is which is basically where they tell you to put them. I like them to play a little lower than that, but. If your instrument will bear lower action and that's what you like, do it. But if it won't bear it, don't force it. You're never going to get there. No, I can live with that. I tend to play pretty hard. I pluck hard. Because I'm an aggressive bass player. But that's just me. If you play lighter, you can. You, chances are you're going to be able to get away with lower action on a bass guitar. And voila. I like that. Let's just see where we are. A little sharp. I'm going to pull that back. So intonation is your saddle screw back here. If you're sharp, that means the distance between your saddle point and your nut point, your string nut, is too short. Okay, so you have to lengthen it. And I just pulled that saddle back. Retune. Switch to the other tuner. That one is not going to pick it up on the headstock. I don't know what I was thinking. I was using that when I was cutting the nut slots, and it's fine for that, but really we need to be more precise. Ooh. Wow. That is perfect. Dead on. It liked that adjustment. Slightly sharp. Almost not worth adjusting, but I know the guy that owns this bass guitar or is ultimately going to be the owner of it. And he's he's a nut. Yes, I'm talking to you. And he will check and recheck and double check. And probably he'll end up taking apart all my work and screwing around with it. And banging it so far out of whack that he can't get it back. And he'll bring it in and pay me again to set it up. Yes, I said it out loud. So right now, somebody's sitting somewhere that owns this base laughing at himself. Because I'm just poking fun. Nazi. Okay, intonation is set. String height is set where I like it. 
for now. We haven't checked to see if it's buzzing anywhere. I don't imagine that it will be, but hey, anything is possible. Um, pick up height. This is going to be a chore. Oh, I got it right where it needs to be. I got it right where it needs to be. That is amazing. Okay, that one's a mile away. Here's the moment of truth. Is this thing going to agree with me and come up like it's supposed to? Meaning, did I get my route, my clearancing done correctly? <laughs> Yeah, they're coming up. And I like that. Could come up slightly more there. Like that. I think we can come up on this side slightly. This one wants to come up. And there is room on the screen for it to pop up. Come up. There we go. Oh, yeah. I like that. Right there. I love it when a plan comes together. This thing's going to scream. I think that one can come up. I'm going to leave it there for now. This thing's ready to play. It's ready to play. So I'm going to run it through this little guy here. See what it says. Because I want to play it. Now, I can't play it through a real amp on the video because it'll just blow the microphone out and you'll never hear it. But man, you can tell. second string tree. I knew that was going to be the case. I have found, oops, sorry, uh, I have found and even on my base, which I have the almost the identical neck to this one, um, sometimes these Mexican necks, uh, they want a second string tree. It does not have enough break angle over the nut to stop that buzzing open. So it 
one needs a second string tree. Um, luckily, I ordered two black ones because I was anticipating that. Um, that, as they say, is that this guitar gets to settle overnight because, well, it's all brand new. It's been settling with the neck on it for, you know, for quite a while. But as far as strings being on it and under tension, it's going to take a couple of days for this thing to settle. Wood will do that. Um, it's a brand new instrument. We just gave it birth. Uh, we just brought it to life. So it's definitely going to need to rest at least a couple of days, probably a week or so. And I'll check it every day and tune it and double check all the adjustments. But that's what it is. Um, thanks for hanging in there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your views and comments. Uh, please like and share. And please uh, keep, up the, keep up the support. I appreciate it.